Yeah, there. And are we recording? Yes. All right, I'll say hello again. <laughs> Greetings. Welcome aboard. We're in both worlds. We have people here in the meeting hall as well as online. Uh, I'll make introductions. Myself, William Hanley, Chair. We've got Tracy Loftus Keller here. We've got Gloria online too. Hi, Gloria. Can you hear us? Unmute space bar. There we go. Hello. We've got Gloria Kunje online. How are you? Can you hear us, Gloria? Maybe. We've got, <laughs> we've also got Meredith online, Meredith Randolph. Can you hear us, Meredith? Yeah. No. <laughs> I can hear you. You, you guys can, Jeff, you can hear us? I, I can hear you, yes. I can hear you, oh, yeah. Meredith is on mute. <laughs> Meredith can hear us though. All right, I so we, we've got a quorum. <laughs> so we're good to go. And uh, all right, so we had, a, first thing we've got is approval of minutes from um, two weeks ago. Which we don't have yet. We don't have them yet, yeah, yeah. okay. So no, and we're up to date to that point. So no other yeah. approval of minutes. And um, I heard a rumor through the grapevine about maybe reorganizing the agenda tonight. <laughs> so uh, just poll you guys to see if there's any objections to taking um, item five other first and then continuing with the regular board agenda just and we've got um uh noel and matt here tonight and just kind of an informal discussion off the bat and wanted to see if there was any opinion from the board to make that recommendation to re reorganize the agenda it's okay with me You okay, Meredith? All good with me. And two, before I before we take a vote on that, we should technically vote Gloria on as a voting member. Um, uh, Tracy Keller, I make a motion to vote on Gloria for uh, this this meeting. Mm -hmm. Dave Ashmore, second. All right, all those in favor, Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Dave. Dave Ashmore, aye. Meredith. <laughs> yes, no. Did that not work? That did work now, yes. Oh, okay, Randolph, aye. All right, and myself, William Hanley, aye. All right, welcome aboard, Gloria. You're a voting member tonight. Let's let's then maybe get a motion about reorganizing the um, the agenda for tonight. Uh, Tracy Keller, I make a motion to take the Land and Garden Preserve Green Rock Project as the first item of our agenda before proceeding with the other two items in their current order. Randolph, I'll second that. All right, all those in favor, Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Meredith. Randolph, aye. Gloria. Gloria Kunje, aye. Dave. Dave Ashmore, aye. Myself, William Hanley, aye. All right. Thank you. So let me just read it off really quick, Noel. It's public. Um, you know, we're taking item number five first tonight under other and what that's talking about is section two general provisions similar uses and what that talks about is unspecified uses which are substantially the same as or having effects the same as the uses listed in section 3.4 shall be treated the same as those listed uses 
similarities shall be determined by the planning board in strict compliance with the standards set forth in section six and with the other pertinent provisions of the ordinance. Any use or activity not listed in section 3.4 shall be excluded unless the planning board in accordance with section 3.4 determines that it is similar to a specified use. And tonight we've got um, the Mount Desert Garden and Land Preserve, uh, Agent Norm Musson, uh, location is 257 Peabody Drive in Seal Harbor, tax map three, lot 15, zone residential two, and purpose is to have an informal discussion regarding use. You're on, Noel. Great. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Noel Musson, um, here uh, representing uh, the Sandy Garden Preserve. Um, Matthew Baird is also here. Uh, the architectural team working on the, um, the conceptual plans for uh, the Green Rock project. And I think Jesse is online, maybe at home, and maybe able to jump in. Jesse Hartson, um, yeah. if we have any uh, Andy Garden Preserve questions, uh, and Rodney's here as well. So um, don't need to take up a huge amount of time tonight. I think the, the real purpose of this meeting is to try to get some conversation with the board about um, interpretation of uses uh, for the for the Land and Garden Preserve's Green Rock property, uh, which is in, currently in the process of being, um, um, you know, um, conceptually planned for just some redevelopment. But really, it's just redevelopment in terms of making the spaces that have been around since the 1920s, I believe, uh, more modern. But you're really using the site for the same purpose, so office space. Um, and then really the facilities um, headquarters for uh, the Land and Garden Preserves operations. Um, Matthew, uh, we, we provided some information to the board in terms of like the conceptual plans, and I think Matthew can talk a little bit more about that just to give you a better sense of what we're, what the plans are. Um, I think our objective is to try to just understand, because Land and Garden Preserve isn't specifically a commercial entity, it's more of a nonprofit entity, what land use categories we might be able to use in the ordinance to, to um, so that we can make proper plans for when we have to come back to the planning board for formal approval. Is that what we would explain that right? But we, we talked to Kim about it a little bit, and I think that it's really the best course of action just to sort of make sure we're all on the same page with uh, this is how we can interpret those types of uses over there. So Maybe I'll turn it over to you real quick, Matthew, and um, yeah. we can kind of go over what the plans are, the vision is currently, and we'll have a conversation. Um, and uh, I don't know if, uh, Jen, do you want to share, can we share screens? Yeah. 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 Um, so we'll, does everyone know where the Green Rock site is? As you well, round Peabody Drive? Yeah. You, you know the address from yes. our presentation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's been there for, uh, almost 100 years. It, it was the site actually of, of uh, where uh, Mr. Rockefeller actually orchestrated all the carriage roads. So that was the shop that cut the stone in many cases. Uh, a lot of equipment has been stored there over the years for the maintenance of the carriage roads. Um, and um, in a wonderful um, um, charitable gift, it was put into a preserve. You all know this history, um, but it's really meaningful that it is an endowed preserve um for the perpetual maintenance of that 1400 acre parcel of land the land and garden preserve and so this is the main office um, where that charitable work is done from there uh, jen is circling uh the what we call the engineering building that was where all the plans were drawn for the carriage roads and um, that was the pay station for actually paying the, the labor uh to the built bridges and and uh all the roads. Um, and that will be the offices for um, the Land and Garden Preserve uh, and is currently. There's a, a large, um, what's called on that plan, um, a garage, which is currently uh, the same building as there now. We're supposed to replace that building uh, with a similar uh, structure <clears throat> that will also house vehicles um, and it will also house. Uh, some uses that are elsewhere on the site. There's a little L-shaped building that we plan to take down. Um, and that building currently has a paint shop and a carpentry shop um, and some storage. And 
the idea is to take that down and move that uh, use into the garage so that we'll have uh, two buildings on the site instead of three. And then we're proposing to add a conforming uh, addition, conforming to zoning, uh, to the existing um, office um, uh, building to allow for offices for some of the folks that are moving from the Kelvin farm uh, to the site. And um, in terms of site planning, we want to talk a little bit about that. We're, we're um, coming up with, there's the existing, um, and uh, I should have mentioned that earlier survey was, I think, from the 30s. Uh, this is a contemporary aerial photograph, we're essentially right across from Little Long Pond, um, a little bit further up the hill towards Seal Harbor. Um, and um, you can see the uses I just described there. Let's go to the next slide, um, which is a, a more formal survey of what's on the ground um, in terms of hardscape and three structures. Um, no one's stopping if, if uh, yeah, I mentioned that things we go through. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we can go to the, the next one real quick and then hit the. Okay, great. Um, and so this is our very schematic. These are sketches. This is not a formal filing. We're just presenting uh, for information purposes what we're uh, trying to do there, which is really to upgrade these buildings uh, for better um, workspaces um, for the staff of the Plan and Garden Preserve. Um, and that's really what we're doing. Yeah. So the, I think the crux of the question is, this is located in an R2 district, so it's outside the shoreland zone. Um, there's an existing office building, which Matthew mentioned, that it's going to get expanded. Offices are allowed use in the R2 zoning district, but again, um, the way that the ordinance is written is it's more of a, it's written for commercial purposes, where this is like a, so if you went to the allowed use of stable, it's for commercial, it's that, that under that commercial category. This is nonprofit, but it still has the same use. And I think we just want to determine that that's consistent. And then um, thinking about the maintenance building, you know, how would we, under this sort of the same approach, categorize um, that maintenance building, which has been there and part of the part of that property since the 1920s? Um, or what use category would we call it? You know, is it services to or similar? So, so something like that. So that's sort of what we're struggling with. And I think that the big deal is if we can agree that we're coming in under something that fits under that table, then we're just approaching the non, you know, it's not a non-conforming issue. It's just it's already there. It's really still to allow them to, that's what we'd like to discuss. How do you feel about that? Feels good, no. Um <laughs> It's correct in assuming that this property predates the land use ordinance. Very much so, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's just the difference. You know, there's a lot of nonprofits around here who have, you know, similar kind of uses as a for profit, but just not quite the same terminology in the ordinance. So, so right now, it's just been existing under the R2. Yep. Yeah. And um, there's no bulk storage outside. You know, they have other places for that. Or Jesse, I'm sure, will jump in um, immediately if I say something wrong. But that's really their operations center. So they have, you know, the indoor, um, you know, paint shop, or the carpentry shop, the mechanical space. And it's sort of their, I'll call it their operations, one of their operations hubs, but their main operation hub, I would say. So I kind of feel like it fits under the... One of the services one, you know, the services one or services two. Like fully category. enclosed. Huh? Fully enclosed. Fully enclosed. Yeah. yeah. We're actually removing the outdoor. Is there still going to be fuel outside? There is still a fuel. Yeah. In, uh, yeah there's an outdoor fuel tank, uh, which is now required to be above ground by yeah. code. But, yeah. But those things are have been there and are there. Uh, and, does our code enforcement officer have any opinion? Well, it's kind of <laughs> it's, it's to you because it's mm -hmm. your baby. Um, we talked about it. <clears throat> um, office space is a 
that's you know that's an allowed use in the R2 and conditional use. So any expansion would need to come new. Um, it's kind of like a mixed use um, type of. And I do agree. I don't know if you if you do wholly enclosed, then that means nothing can be stored outside of the buildings. I don't know if that's ideally what you want, which is related to you said paint and carpentry. So no wood could be out there, no equipment of any type that would be used for that type if that if the board so, so chooses to consider that. Um, as far as storage of construction equipment and heavy vehicles, is there backhoes and stuff like that that's anticipated to be stored on the property? I think temporarily there probably are things out there like that, Kim, but not all the time. That's that's what my understanding. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Probably if Jesse was there now, so when when uh, Noel said the mechanical uh, building, uh, that this is the vehicular maintenance building. So when a truck breaks or a trailer needs a new axle, uh, it comes here and they have a full welding shop and machine shop to repair vehicles. <clears throat> the existing garage, and we're proposing to renovate that. Uh, same years. So it's not residential, recreational, public. It's not commercial. It's not commercial. No profit. Um, the new gas slash parking canopy, is that new or that's new? Yeah. Is there so there's no gas um filling station on site right now? There is a filling station on site right now, there is. Um, just adjacent to the existing warehouse. And the proposal is to move that. Um and you can see where right it's if you see it there. Yeah, yep. Jen certainly. Yep. yep. So um so the gas slash park and canopy, is that kind of like what you see at some zone and stuff? The canopy? <laughs> Not that big. No, but the canopy. Yeah, the canopy. Yes, some covered uh with gas pumps. With a gas. <clears throat> well, it'd be a tank with a hose, uh similar to what's there now. And the canopy is really to cover, give them some covered uh, outdoor space for parking, um, to put a trailer with some, um, you know, to protect it from the weather. Um, so I, I think in an ideal world, yes, they, they would want to be able to store some things out, outside. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, we'd like to explore that. There, there's a lot of, of wood that comes here to be um, milled, and so you can imagine bringing a trailer full of wood uh, in and, and then bringing it into the carpentry shop, but it might be outside on racks or a huge cover. So is the um, is the garage building this is going to be the same size as the existing as proposed? Uh, it kind of looks it on It's it's now. about the same size. We're we're in schematic design and we're kind of. Uh, pushing and pulling it, but right now the footprint is within 15 feet uh, of length of the existing. So um, okay. the, what you're seeing there is a little bit longer, okay. but I think um, we're in the process of determining exactly how big it needs to be. And this back building, what you say it was used for? The yeah. paint shop, you said? The okay. one that you're demolishing? Paint and carpentry. There's so you're just moving, moving, moving that stuff across, and uh, that's what's causing the garage to get a little bit bigger. Okay. Yeah, so I think, I mean, again, the biggest questions in terms of how we proceed from developing the schematic design to more design development process and following up with the permitting is just figuring out which approach is most appropriate for this particular. And so, Kim, even though they're, they're a 501c3, uh, I, this seems like it's most closely aligned with services two or three. And on this building, I mean, yeah. like I said, I think there's multi uses happening on this site. Yeah. I mean, and you can have more than one principal use on a property, with the exception of the shoreland zone, without having to meet the defense requirements. Um, I agree, but I think you, you're not in trying to classify it as something no. that's similar. Um, 
I think services three probably would be and office building. Yeah. I would agree with that. It feels office and services three. That's yeah, I think I would have that's the direction that we were headed. Offices and fact server, I think a combination of services two and three. Yeah. I would say yeah, there's no Old storage materials outside. It's really that side storage space that we then have the wood and then bring it into the wood shops like that. Yeah. Or um, obviously you can't do you know the storage of construction equipment heavy. Yeah, that's why I have so loud. Yeah, that's yeah. why I have so loud. Yeah, but I I just I can't say that it wouldn't be there. You know, as Matthew said, that's the now, there is a facility there. That's why the facility is there. But it's not intended to store that. They collect other facilities for that storage. Yeah. And it's been, I mean, so we could approach this in a couple of different ways. So I think this is the most straightforward and appropriate way to approach it, mm -hmm. to, to call it something similar to what's already allowed, rather than think about it as a nonconformity and then come in and try to talk about it that way. But, but we're not... Nothing about this proposal changes the way that this property has been used since the 1920s or before. It's just that the zoning around it, the, or, the ordinances have changed and doesn't really account for this particular. Meredith, what do you think? Um, I'm sorry, my internet's not that great this evening. Um, and I I definitely think it's uh, obviously it's office building and then the the main the new garage shop it seems to me I definitely put it in services three and I'm just wondering about the um parking canopy as just being the storage of construction equipment and heavy vehicles at the bottom of the that page so yeah, I think the parking canopy, and correct me if I'm wrong, Matthew, isn't isn't for the storage of heavy vehicles. Isn't there like a charging station for electric vehicles oh, yeah, over there and yeah. just fueling up of their trucks and, and fleet more mm -hmm. than storage? And it's just to keep people, be able to keep people out of the elements. I guess That's it was right. a comment about a gas, a gas pump that I sort of just categorized that as storage of construction equipment. It, it sounds like the same category with a gas tank there, but I don't know. I mean, it could fall on even on uh, public, but a public utility says a person, a person, firm, corporation, municipal department, board, or commission authorized to furnish gas. And, you know, so that's to the public, but it's really not to the public. It's to the fleet, to the, the place, but I don't think it's, it wouldn't. I don't think it would be storage of construction equipment and heavy vehicles. Yeah, I don't. That to me would be more like bulldozers, big trucks, you know, more of a company like a Doug Dot or something like that. I wouldn't classify the gas pump and the storage of their personal fleet, me, as storage of uh, construction equipment and heavy vehicles. But it's more so they're like a truck, right? They're right with this basic truck. Yeah, yeah. what is that? Yeah, it's sad. Mm -hmm. Lawnmowers, it's like that, whatever, anything. Travelers, such a sad. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're still within office building and services three. Yeah. Dave, any thoughts? Um, Noel does. Um, it being services three work for you? Yes, work great. <clears throat> it works for me. Yeah, it doesn't push them into non-conforming territory. <clears throat> That's even better. Yeah, <laughs> Gloria, any thoughts? Thanks anyway. Appreciate your help. Sorry about that. I was just with um oh, I'm still at work, so <laughs> yeah. Um I'm just listening in for now. It's okay. 
Yeah. We're, you know, I think the board is aligned here that this is falling under the services three and office building uses or similarly to them. <clears throat> You guys want a finding from the board? I mean, if you're in a position to make a finding, I think mm -hmm. that would help. But you could also make a finding when we actually apply for something. But mm -hmm. it make make me feel more comfortable if you just, even if it's an informal. Yeah. I think the purpose tonight is for them to establish. Yeah. A yeah. Use it somewhere and to vote on it. So yeah. They know <clears throat> when they leave where to go from here. Got great. it. So. <sighs> Okay, so do I, uh, be that, and then where's the office we It's right over here. This on one. Building. Okay, um, I make a motion to find the um, most similar use is the services three, um, not wholly enclosed construction, masonry, plumbing, painting, and carpentry use, and the offices build office building use. Dave Ashmore, second. All right, all those in favor, Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Dave. Dave Ashmore, aye. Meredith. Yes. And we can stop sharing. Yeah, we could turn the screen share off. That would be great, thanks. Meredith, she, did we lose oh, yeah. Meredith? Yeah. Gloria. Yeah, Gloria. Gloria Conje, I. And myself, William Hanley, I. There's a, there's the quorum. <laughs> Board is up. Great. Thank there you. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You guys. All right. And thank you to the other applicants just letting us jostle to schedule around tonight. And let's. Uh, keep the train rolling down the tracks here. All right. So item three on the, then jumping back to item three on the agenda tonight, we have uh, a couple of, we have a conditional use approval application. We have conditional use approval application 003-2023 Owners Community School, Mount Desert, Agent is Nick Genet and Jasmine Smith. Uh, we've got the location as 585 Sound Drive, Mount Desert, Tax Map 10, Lot 161, Zones, Shoreland Residential 3, Rural or Woodland 3, and Resource Protection. Uh, section 5.6, Amendment to a Previously Approved Conditional Use Approval Application, Independent School. We had a site inspection at 430. And was this one advertised and a butter's notified? Let's see what I can figure out. Put the back. Way in the back. It's way in the back. Way in the back. Yeah. Way, way in the back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, the abutters uh, were notified. Uh, I don't have a date for that particular thing, but uh, then I can say that the, um, okay. here's the abutters uh, notification. Yeah. Um, and there's the publication. But this is the previous one. That's the previous one. That okay. is? This is a, yes, this is from 2020. Yeah. You've got a nice thick file here, Nick. I'm I'd just say. Waiting through it. Take take your time. Thank you very much. No. No. Keep going. This is 22. We were closer. Yeah, 
Okay, so the abutters were notified by a letter dated March 6, 2023. And when was it advertised? Not seeing that. Oh, wait, stop. 2022. Yep. We've got 2022. Can I see it? Yes, yep. absolutely. <clears throat> Can we report on the site visit? Why don't we report on the site visit while we're at it? All right. And well, both Meredith and I attended the site visit and we met with Jasmine Smith and um, uh, we discussed the um, new yurt that's going to be uh, placed on a uh, an existing platform that did not have anything on it. Um, we, all three of us, went inside of the existing yurt, which is about, I, I think I'll get this right, about 24 square feet, uh, and observed um, the interior of the yurt, which was lovely and heated and uh, very um, aesthetically pleasing. And uh, we are um, understand that uh, the new yurt is to be uh, erected on the existing empty platform is going to be about 20 square feet and very, very similar in um, a present, you know, presentation once it's up. So um, that was pretty much the extent of our visit, um, but we discussed um, the structure of the existing yurt and the insulation and um, observed that there's a, I don't know what you call it, a mini split, uh, uh, very similar to that one uh, in this uh, room. Um, and that was, that was sort of our whole, um, visit, and um, I think that's about my whole report. Meredith, anything to add? <clears throat> um, Tracy, I just think that you might have meant that it was 20, the yurt they have, I think, is 20 feet in diameter. Oh, 24. And I think the new Sorry. one's 20 feet in diameter. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I was like a 20 square foot would be very small. Um, <laughs> um, no, we just discussed that that the issue here is um, the amount of interior space that the, the school is allowed to have, that the platform is there, so it is not a lot coverage issue. It's uh, the number of square feet of um, school use interior space and so i guess so we're just discussing whether they're getting close uh, anyway i'll let somebody else discuss that but all right well we'll turn it over to you then nick absolutely yes uh good evening everyone um can you hear me okay yeah. yes okay great yeah, I mean, I think it is as simple as that. I think you'll see from our packet that this brings us, uh, we're still under 4,000 square feet with this new yurt, um, and we have a 5,000 foot uh, square foot interior limit. Um, so um, I'm just, I'm pulling up that document real quick right now to give you the exact number of where we are, but it should be right on that cover letter. Um, I'm just lost in all my windows here trying to find my my PDF. Bill, do you see that right there? Yeah. 
4,169 okay. square feet. So just, sorry, I misspoke. So just under 4,200 of our 5,000 foot allotment. Um, and yeah, this the the yurt will be identical. It's just um, a 20 uh, foot diameter as opposed to the 24 foot diameter that we currently have there. And really um, all the engineering that we have, Hedefine did, it's very similar. Um, Carla um, of... Um, uh, design collaborative collaborative did the did the design for it. Um, it's yeah, all up to fire code. Um, I would just uh, ask if there's any questions that I can help you with. Um, if uh, anybody needs uh, any clarification about any aspects of the of the yurt or the platform. Thank you. Well, let me first say, Kim found that that it was advertised in the. March, March 9th issue of the Islander. So we're all set there and we've got a copy of it now in the, the original um, uh, project folder. And uh, I put it out there to the public. If there's any questions from the public for the applicant, feel free to ask. The board can ask questions too. <laughs> Any questions, Dave? Um, the only question I have is uh, the conflict of interest issue. I don't believe you asked that question. Thank you. Is there any conflict of interest from the board with this application? None heard. Any questions from anybody? All right, I'm not hearing any questions, so we'll close the public comment and um, first ask if um, the board considers this application complete. I make a motion to find the application complete. Dave Ashmore, second. All right, all those in favor, Meredith? Randolph, aye. Dave. Dave Ashmore, aye. Gloria. Gloria Kunje, aye. Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. And myself, William Hanley, aye. Um, so we're going through a conditional use checklist on this. So we're going through section 5.6, which is an amendment section, which I do. And yeah, you're going through six. So, and 5.9, which is packet. So we're doing 6A, B, and C, 5, 9, and 5, 6. Or do we do yeah, 5, 6, five, six first? And yeah, because yeah, 5, 6 is your amendment section. All right. And that's why the back is because it's an amendment to three other previously approved conditional use. So, excuse me. So if you look in your packet, should be right. It should have been in the file, but I don't know if it's moved now. Probably the file. In the original packet? Yeah, which is the blue one. Do we have the option for a short form? Yes, we do. I mean, That's a, we used a short form. <laughs> yeah, um, amendment. Yeah, yeah. Five, yeah. six amendment, and then, and then five, at the bottom is six A. Yeah, well, okay, yep. well, don't we do five nine after we go through six A, B, and C, yeah. right? Yeah, and that was yeah. yep. So all right, so, is in order. Yeah. so we're doing five six first. Meredith just made a motion to consider the check the short form checklist. There is no short form. Yeah, you have just check the form that's in front of you. But why can't we use the short form checklist for six A, B, and C? If you look at look at five six. Yeah. That form you see it's at the bottom on six A. Oh. You see that? Got it. It's all one stop shopping. Look at that. <laughs> that's why it's supposed to be easy with an uh, amendment. Yeah. Wow. So, just so the board's aware of this, we've got. On this amendment form 5.6, we've got essentially is a short form. We've got section 
five six six a six b six c and then um separately section five nine so i think we technically don't need a anything recommend shorter. anything shorter that's i withdraw all, my motion <laughs> it's all there so So Kim, with the amendment thing then, so we're just going through the checklist uh, here. Um, do we need to do the protocol thing where we make a motion to approve the application, pause, and then go through the review? For the amendment, you just, if this is obviously not a minor change. No. And that's the reason why it's for you is because there's <clears throat> other changes that require uh, approved conditional use for you guys. So okay. that's what five six ideally is. And then you go from five, I mean section six, A B B. Okay, so we're just gonna and then dive. five nine should be separate in that packet. Right. So we're just gonna dive into it. Yeah. So <clears throat> just bear with me guys as I read for the record. Um Section 5.6 amendment. And what that talks about is that no proposed or existing building premise or land use authorized as a conditional use may be established, enlarged, modified, structurally altered, or otherwise changed from an from that approved in the conditional use permit unless such amendment is authorized in accordance with the standards and procedures set forth in the ordinance and the conditional use permit and approved site plan are amended accordingly. Get minor and go right to that one. Yeah, so this is not a minor change. Uh, it falls under other changes. And what other changes states is that um, those are changes to an approved conditional use permit, which we have, other than minor changes in the placement of and size of improvement shall require amendment to the conditional use permit by the planning board. The requirements for the application and approval of conditional use permit amendment shall be the same as the requirements for the original application and approval. So we should probably have a finding that under section 5.6 amendment, this um, proposed revision to the previous conditional use approval falls under other changes. As reviewed by the planning board. As reviewed by the planning board. I'll make that motion if Heidi can write that fast. <laughs> <laughs> you say that one more time, Bill, sorry. Yeah, so that <clears throat> we should probably have a motion stating that the proposed conditional use amendment okay, fall, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. falls under 5.6 amendment other changes. Okay, great. And Meredith has made that motion. Mm -hmm. Didn't that sound like me? Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Great. And Tracy Keller, I'll second it. Okay. All right, all those in favor, Meredith. Randolph, aye. Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Dave. Dave Ashmore, aye. Gloria. Gloria Conje, aye. And myself, William Hanley, aye. Okay, now we drill down through it. And that kicks us to section 6A, general performance standards. 6A1, compatibility. Uh, physical size that was already an approved 20 by 20 foot platform. The yurt has a diameter of 20 feet. Uh, visual impact yurts um, installed directly behind the barn, proximity to other structures. The yurt will be 37 feet away from the barn. And we have an attached site plan. So see application. <clears throat> Erosion and sedimentation control. Uh, the platform's already there, so there's no groundwork involved. So C application, highway safety, 6A3, say no impact, 
see application. Um, 6A4 impact on town services. The applicant says no impact. So see application. Land suitability, 6A5. The applicant says no landscape around the yurt after the construction to prevent erosion. Um, so see application. 6A6 outdoor lighting. They say applicable standard met. I condition that that they have to provide the cut sheet for the exterior lighting. Got it. Do I do I so C notes below? Also, are you gonna, condition it? So we'll just condition yeah, it. Yeah, put it at the end as a condition. So do I need to put that in the current notes? No, you're gonna put it. You gotta put it on conditions. Got it. See application. And sorry, Kim. What uh, it was the spec sheet for, or sorry, it was the specific code for the lighting requirements. Is that what you said? Yeah. For yeah, you need um, lighting specifications because we have a dark sky ordinance. So once you pick your lighting for your exterior, just provide the cut sheet to make sure it meets section six a six of the ordinance. Perfect. That's clear. Okay. Thank you. Yep, you're going to need a building permit to put the urine, urine up, so make sure you have those lighting specs at that time. <clears throat> okay. we, don't, we don't want you competing with the gas station, you know. <laughs> well, we, we had big visions for a Vegas style light, light installation. So. <laughs> 6A7 stormwater. Uh, let's see, Avenue yeah. Standard Matt, so C application. <clears throat> um, vegetation, they said NA, nothing being removed. 6A9, dust fumes, vapors, odors, and gases. They say NA. So the findings of fact are presented by the applicant uh, and see the attached application notes below and that the conclusion laws that the Proposed use is in compliance with all standards of section 6A for which the standard has been met. Uh, so the conditions for the lighting are separate things. Yeah, we'll the have a permit. Okay. Yeah, we'll right. have a permit condition. So for the what he just said, so moved. <laughs> Meredith Randolph, I'll second that. All right, all those in favor, Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Meredith. Randolph, aye. Dave. Dave Ashmore, aye. Gloria. Gloria Kunje, aye. Myself, William Hanley, aye. <laughs> all right, moving on, section 6B. Specific performance standards for activities and land uses. That's all her name. Yeah, it's all N A. Yep. Agriculture, air landing sites, excavation, fences and walls, sign regulations, wireless communication facility, animal husbandry two, mobile food vendors, all N A. So that the <clears throat> findings of fact about the proposed use will include none of the specific activities. Or land use is described in section 6B, and the conclusion law of section 6B is not applicable. So moved, Tracy Kelly. Meredith Randolph, I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor, Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Meredith. Randolph, aye. Dave. Dave Ashmore, aye. Gloria. Gloria from J.I. And myself, William Hanley, I. All right, moving on. Shoreland zoning standards, section six. The only section would be four. Two, sorry. <clears throat> right, so agriculture is NA, archaeolo archaeological sites. I got NA, but. I got a copy of the math in the file. So C application. Yep. 
And then the rest of NA is yes, six five through eleven are NA. So the findings of fact are that the proposed use will include none of the specific activities or land uses described in section 6C except for 6C2. And the conclusion was that section 6C is not applicable except for section 6C2 for which the standard has been met. Tracy Keller, so moved. Meredith Randolph. All right, all those in favor, Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Merida. Randolph, aye. Dave. Dave Ashmore, aye. Gloria. Gloria Kunje, aye. Myself, William Hanley, aye. Um, so where we're in the shoreland zone, we have to do section 5-9. <laughs> so, Yeah, I think they should probably modify this, Kim, because it's got a ball as NA. And mm. I mean, what do you think? There's no bathroom in the building. We'll maintain no safe and healthful conditions as NA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, Bill, which, which question was that specifically related oh, to? It's, it's, yeah, it's so. Um, it's the additional section we have to review in 5.9 and it's 5.91. Okay. And so when you go down through, we'll maintain safe and healthful conditions. Usually on the, even the most modest of applications, and this one is pretty modest. Um, we just, most of these are C application or NA. Okay. Also well, the... 591 should be a C applicable. Uh, sorry, C application. Yeah. 596 should be C application. Yes. Okay. I'm happy to uh, to maybe like last time, Kim, if that's okay. Can I can I initial those when I come in and and to make those changes? Yeah. 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 Yes. Great. Thank I mean, you. Why, why wouldn't? Are not applicable. Yeah. Why wouldn't? Um, well, yeah, because it's existing. Well, yeah. So, water and stuff. Yeah. Just yeah. let me read through them. So, 591 will maintain safe and healthful conditions, C application. 592 will not result in water pollution, erosion, or sedimentation to surface waters. I think that should be C, C application. N -A. Why? They're not doing any soil disturbance. The platforms are there. Okay. So the platform is already there. NA. So we'll adequately, 593, adequately propose, provide for disposal of wastewater. That is NA, there is no wastewater. Okay. 594, mm -hmm. not have an adverse impact on spawning grounds, fish, aquatic life, bird, or wildlife habitat. NA, it's- well, No, we'll put the application because I have- The um, application. I'll do the map. I don't think yeah. this is a habitat area. I think okay. on the other side it might be, but not the, their side. Will conserve shore cover and visual as well as, well as actual points of access to inland and coastal Nothing waters. Disturbed, so that's NA. Uh, 596 will protect the archaeological and historic resources. The application. 597 will not adversely affect commercial fishing. Okay. And it's NA, you're not in the shoreland commercial district. 598 will avoid uh, problems within the floodplain. The application. See I'll get a map. Yeah, they're not. Okay. There's a map showing they're not yep. in, in the floodplain. Um, 599 and is in conformance with the provisions of 6A, B, and C, which the standard has been met. And then the findings of fact are C above, and the conclusion was that all requirements of section 59 have been met. <laughs> Tracy Keller, so moved. Meredith Randolph, I second. All right, all those in favor, Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Meredith. Randolph, aye. Dave. Dave Ashmore, aye. Gloria. Gloria Kunji, aye. Myself, William Hanley, aye. So then we circle back to the permit condition, and the permit condition was uh have to provide a cut sheet for the exterior lighting. Yeah. 
All right, and then moving on to the vote of approval, all those. We need a motion and second, we did not do an approval. Correctly. All right, um, okay. any motion to approve the application? I make a motion to approve the application with the, uh, what did we call that? You know, the, the need to bring the, the permanent, permanent, condition. permanent condition. That's what I'm looking for. Dave Ashmore, second. All right. All those in favor, Merida? Randolph, aye. Dave? Dave Ashmore, aye. Gloria? Gloria Hunje, aye. Tracy? Tracy Keller, aye. Myself, William Hanley, aye. And then the actual motion to approve. Tracy Keller, I make the motion to approve. Didn't we just do that? Did, didn't we just do that? Yeah, we did. <laughs> that is okay. all right. That threw me because we usually do it the other way. But all right, so I can say congratulations then, Nick. You're mm -hmm. you're all set. Just get us the cut sheet. And just or, don't forget a building permit for the yard. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds great. Um, I'll probably come in next week, Kim, and I'll show you that lighting stuff. And um, as always, everyone, I appreciate you um, just having the patience with the conditional use application stuff. I uh, thank you for for going through all this uh, all the time with us. And um, yeah, we really thank you and uh, wish you all a happy spring. And um, we'll uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Thank you. All right. Good night. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> Just after the envelope. Yeah. Did you sign that? Yes. So there's, she's with the approval is technically stapled to five nine, even though it's also on six A, B, and C. Yeah, I was going to ask about that, but we don't need the sign board. Yeah, sign board. Sign board. Yeah. <laughs> And I guess what my question is, where did that permit condition? That was part of the 6A, B, and C section. Yes. That's where you want that, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, because that's the section that requires that shape. Yep. Good question. How you doing? Yeah. All right. Two down, one to go. Have the list. We do have a long list. Um, so item four tonight, subdivisional approval application. We have a completeness review of subdivision 001-2023. Owner is James F. Marco Vizzi, um, Revocable Trust. Agent is Jeff Tunison from Haley Ward, location off Corey Zed, Edge Road, Mount Desert, tax map A. Lot 134-003-001, zoning district is rural 113, purpose is modifications to a previously approved and recorded subdivision amendment number one of the 3.02 acre subdivision file 45, number 61, recorded October 25th, 2018, and amendment number two, file 48, number 54, recorded March 10th, 2021. And Jeff, why don't you just kick it off and then we'll go from there. Thank you, Bill. Good evening, everybody. Um, first of all, I wanted to apologize for the confusion a couple weeks ago. Um, but Kim and I had some good discussions since the meeting. And um, I also um, listened, listened to Meredith's concerns about the plan. So I really, um, I took some time and cleaned it up. Um, so it, it's, it, it looks, uh, it's more, there's more clarity to the plan, I feel. Um, Gloria, uh, you weren't at the last meeting. Uh, my client, Mr. Marco Glisi is looking to, he's, he's, first of all, he's got, as Kim pointed out, he's got, one lot that is um, one taxed lot. And it was part of a previous subdivision. Um, 
due to the wetland areas and the gravel, um, what we want to do is create a new division line um, so he can uh, plan his estate for his children. He wants to put, he wants to uh, convey uh, two lots to two of his children in the future for estate planning. Um, that's the crux of the proposal. Um, I think that you have a application that's ready to review for completeness. And if anybody has any questions, please uh, let me know. Will do. Meredith, any further questions of the applicant? You're yeah. muted, Meredith. Oh, sorry. Didn't we didn't we approve it last time? But we were under the impression that it was shifting lot lines, and we actually are creating a new lot because you're taking one lot and splitting it. Correct. Uh, and I'm just noticing that on the title sheet, it says a 3.02. Acre subdivision. That's an that was the, than that was the the weird name of the old. They, they actually aimed the old subdivision that. So oh. it's a it's a revision to that. That's yeah. really weird. That's very. I was like, this isn't three point zero. I, no, I know. I know. I, I actually have no. I I don't know that I've ever seen a subdivision name like that, but. <laughs> Well, we got one now. Yeah. <laughs> right. We had two. I yes. think it's very clear now. It's it's just Thank simple. You. All the extra stuff is off. It's just they've got a lot. They want to split it. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah. Like I said, Kim was very helpful and in our discussion. So I appreciate her help. So, Kim, should we go as we go through the completeness checklists mm -hmm. in each section? Yeah. Do we have a finding and on each section or we do it all kind of at the end or? Yep, uh, well, you've done it a few different ways in the past, but um, what you do is you can, if you want to, you go down section 4.2.1 and then go through one through nine and then find a finding at the, at the, the end of that the, section and vice versa. That's what okay. I was thinking we're gonna do and yeah and, and, and ideally what you're doing mm -hmm. is looking to the plan and to the application mm -hmm. if, if it's on it and you're satisfied with what was submitted <laughs> that was that your cat that was my cat <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I, I i had a life change a couple of years ago the cat was not mine um uh I don't know. Some some of you may know my wife passed away a couple of years ago, and my cat is now attached to me like <laughs> crazy. So, <laughs> so that, that, that was my cat. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go through the checklist here. We're starting with section <laughs> four point two point one. Information on the applicant. Name of the applicant. Got it. Name of the agent. Got that. If the applicant is a corp, um, state whether the corporation is licensed. It's not. Um, name of the applicant's authorized representative and <clears throat> authorization. Uh, we've got that from Jeff. Um, name, address, number of the registered professional engineer, land surveyor, or planner. We've got that on the plan here. Six address to which all correspondence from the board should be sent. Uh, we've got that in your cover letter. It's been packed too. Yeah. Hey, um, Bill. Yes. Last time we started with the discussion of whether we needed, we didn't go through all of this. We started with a, a discussion of whether there was enough of a change to warrant a public meeting or that's no, we, I did that at your last meeting. Now you're doing completeness for you. Oh, okay. I thought we, all right, never mind. I get it. 
Yeah, we're just grinding down through the checklist this hearing. Making sure that the application is complete so that we can continue with the review of it. Well, the last time we decided that it didn't need to be a public hearing, I still don't think it needs to be a public hearing, but we decided that it didn't be need to be a public hearing because it wasn't a change in the number of lots and it is a change in the number of lots. And I guess I think there should be somewhere in the record since we made a decision on the understanding that it was not, that we're still not having a public hearing even though it is a change in the number of lots. So are you shaking your head yes or no? No, I'm saying no, because at your last meeting, you determined that it doesn't require a public hearing because it didn't meet the criteria under Section 513. But in actuality, it did, because it's going from one lot to two. So therefore, it requires a complete review. Hence, it will have a public hearing at the last phase of this review process. So yes, it requires a public hearing. So yes to what you're saying, <clears throat> because I guess it's just the, the whatever the the decision is. We need to revise what we decided last time. I agree. Yeah, you probably we, yes. Yes. Did we rescind that last motion? That yeah, I time? would. Yeah, what I would do is I would um, I would discuss you know what happened at the. Um, Maybe Meredith makes a motion to rescind March, what was it, rescind her yeah, motion. Meeting. Just say yeah. Just say we rescind the review. Uh, or the motion. Yeah. Yeah. We rescind the review. I mean, the motion that was decided at the March 8, 2022 meeting with regards to provisions to this subdivision. Yes, I rescind all of that. <laughs> David Ash was. Second. Uh, Dave got it. <laughs> all right. All those in favor, Meredith? Randolph, aye. Dave? Dave Ashmore, aye. And, and also, Meredith, good catch. Yes. Meredith, Dave, Tracy? Tracy Keller, aye. Um, I don't think Gloria voted. She wasn't at, she wasn't at that. So then uh, my, myself, William Hanley, aye. Okay. Good yeah. one, Merida. Seven. Four, two, one. You get a gold star, Merida. Super. I'll <laughs> stop by the town office to pick that up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's continue with the checklist. Um, and we're on section 4.2.1. Number, uh, seven. number seven. What interest does the applicant have in the parcel to be subdivided? <laughs> No, oh, they own it. Huh? What? It, what interest does the applicant have in the parts that can be subdivided? Yeah. It, oh, it's, it's, it's referenced on the plan. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then nine state weather preliminary plot plan covers the entire contiguous holdings of the owner. You must say, yeah, you must say. Oh. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> uh, what what interest does the applicant have in any property abutting parcel to be subdivided? I mean, he owns the abutting lot. Yeah, I mean, it's shown on the plot. Yeah, plan. just you can say the applicant does have interest in any property abutting the parcel to be subdivided. Mm -hmm. In nine state weather, the preliminary plot plan covers the entire contiguous holdings of the owner. Is it showing the everything? Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. So then we need a um, findings on the completeness of section four point two point one. What well, um, it's it's supposed to show everything that he owns that's in contact with each other. No, just in that subdivision. And the lot that's that's to the south of this lot is yeah. not part of the yeah. subject. That's correct. No. Okie dokie. Is 
Is 421 complete? I believe so. So, is that a motion? To, uh, Tracy Keller, I make a motion to find section 4.2.1 complete. I'll second that. Great. All those in favor? Tracy? Tracy Keller, aye. Meredith? And all five. Gloria? Gloria Kunji, aye. Wait, can Gloria vote now, right? On the on the completeness. Yeah. Yes. And Dave. Dave Ashmore, aye. And myself, William Hanley, aye. Okay. 422, information on parcel to be subdivided. Location of property, map and lot. It's on the plan. Survey maps, uh, two survey maps of track to be subdivided, as well as contiguous property of the owner of the track, certified by a registered land surveyor. Got that in the stamp. Um, three current zoning districts of the property. All of them three, yes. Yeah, it's. Um, Four acreage of parcel to be subdivided. It's on the plot. Five, an SSWD by a licensed soil engineer identifying soil types and a map showing the location of soil test areas. Not on the map. On the map. Uh, six, name of property owners within a thousand feet of the parcel. It's in the packet. It's in the packet. Seven, any restrictive covenants to be placed on the deeds? Unproposed. proposed. Um, eight, proposed soil erosion and sedimentation control. No work being associated yeah, I mean, with the land division. Yeah, technically, NA water supply. Also, mm -hmm. kind of technically, NA. Mm -hmm. So, any motion on the completeness of section 422? I make a motion to make sec find section 4.22 complete. And Tracy Keller, I'll second that. All, right. All those in favor, Meredith? Randolph, aye. Tracy? Tracy Keller, aye. Gloria? Gloria Kunji, aye. Dave? Dave Ashmore, aye. Myself, William Hanley, aye. All right, section 423, information on subdivision, proposed name of subdivision. Got it. It's on the plan. <laughs> Number of lots shown on the plan. Date, North Point, graphic map scale. It's on the plan. Proposed lot lines with approximate dimensions. It's on the plan. Location of temporary markers so located as to enable the board. Oh, God, this is double sided. Um, <laughs> to enable the board readily to locate the lots and appraise basic lot layouts. They were flagged, right? They yes. Yeah. Flagged, yeah. Location of all parcels to be dedicated to public use. There are none. Seven, the location map consisting of USGS topo map. On the plan. <clears throat> On the eight, location and size of existing buildings and essential existing features. They've got a couple features on the plan. Features. Um, location of all wetlands, regardless of size. Um, that's on the plan. Location of all drains. Should, by the adequate stormwater management, that's NA. Um, 11, location and size of existing proposed sewers and water mains, culverts and drains. It's on the plan. 12, location names. The widths of existing proposed streets, highways, and easements, building lines, parks, and open spaces. Names of abutters shown on the plan. Mm -hmm. Subdivide, uh, subdivider would determine based on the 
FEMA's flood boundary and floodway maps. If it's in a flood, flood prone area, it's not um, 15. Any other information not indicated above as specified by the board. So any motion to find section 423 complete? Tracy Keller, I'll make a motion to find section 4.2.3 complete. Randolph, I make a uh, second that. All right, all those in favor, Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Meredith. Randolph, aye. Dave. Dave Ashmore, aye. Gloria. Gloria Kunji, aye. Myself, William Hanley, I. All right, when we go on to section five, general requirements, buffer strip. Mm -hmm. You need a buffer strip on this, Kim? Huh? Buffer strip. Know. Ideally, no, because they're not developed and it's all wooded right yeah. now. So, anybody that develops in this so is going to maintain a buffer. So, <clears throat> technically, 5 1 is NA because it's not developed. Um, Or are there any plans for development? Yeah. Like I said a couple of weeks ago, I don't know what they're going to do, if anything. Okay. So Mr. Marshall Gleesey said, I don't know if they're going to do anything. He just said, I just need to get my things in order. So I like the lot. The two lots are nice. If I was mm -hmm. one of their kids, I would. I try to develop one of them small with a small little yurt. <laughs> I too don't. All right. So, any, um, well, how do you want to do that? We did 4 1. 5.1. Yeah. Do we need to Are you go through all five like you did and then go to the end and vote? Okay. Okay. Yeah. 5 2 conformance with other laws and regulations. That the proposed subdivision is in conformance with all pertinent state and federal ordinances. Uh, okay, uh, five three construction prohibited. No utility installations, ditching, grading, or construction roads. No grading land or lots, or and no construction building shall be commenced on any part of the proposed subdivision until a final plot plan of the subdivision has been prepared and reviewed and approved. This is just the land division. Yeah, development. It's just oh, the yeah. land division. Five four ditches and catch basins. The board may require the installation of ditches, catch basins, piping systems, and other appurtenances appurtenances for the conveyance control and disposal of surface water. It's undeveloped. That'll be addressed when developed and is applied for. Yep. By five easements, the board may require easements for sewer, drainage, utilities, and public access. There's no easements closed um, with the exception of the road access to the well, lots. Five six dedication for year round housing. Not applicable. Yeah. Um, five seven lots and density. Well, actually, uh, yeah. The lots meet the zoning of three acres minimum lot size, not including the <clears throat> roadway and the wetlands that are broken down, as you can see on the plan. Yep. Mm -hmm. Five seven two. Uh, where the individual on-site sewage disposal systems are to be utilized, the size of each lot shall be based on soil characteristics. And okay, well, you've got test septic design again. Once developed, we'll yeah. provide that information. Got it. Five seven three. 
Planning board shall determine that the division of land will be reviewed as a cluster workforce or conventional subdivision. It's a conventional yeah. subdivision. 5A sewage disposal. Mm, just have pits. Yeah, 581, where any part of a proposed subdivision is located within 1,500 feet of a public sanitary sewer line, it's not. 582, where private subsurface sewage disposal is utilized, the subdivider must conform to the state of Maine plumbing code and lose our requirements. Though can, nothing is proposed yet. Five. Disposal sites shall be totally contained on a lot being served. Yep. Sy system shall be designed to the highest standards for the specified use and there are no contaminations of existing proposed wells. 5.9, land not suitable for development. The board shall not approve such portions of any proposed subdivision located on land below sea level or within the 100 year floodplain. And then, <coughs> In a 510 open space provisions, 510.1, board may require that a proposed subdivision design include a landscape plan that will show preservation of existing trees 10 inches or more in diameter, placement trees and vegetation. The road already exists. There's no proposed grading and filling. It's just a line reorganization at this point. Uh, the board 510-2, the board may require that the subdivider reserve an area of land as an open space and recreational area. There, there's none proposed. Five, 511 wells, uh, 511 one, because they are difficult to maintain in sanitary condition, dug wells may be permitted. There is no dug wells proposed. Uh, 511 two, the applicant may be required to show the availability of adequate potable water. The test well may be required. Um, 512 performance bond, 5121, the board may require a subdivider file. The subdivider file with the board at the time of submission of the final plan, a performance guarantee and amount is sufficient to spray all fray all expenses of proposed. That's not applicable. Yeah, it's NA. It's already fair. Typically, like road, putting in a road, yeah. and the utility services you know, needed for yeah. subdivision. That's all in. These lots down at the bottom are developed. Yeah, I would say 512 to 512 3 and 512 4 all are, and 512.1 are all relative to a performance bond in our NA. Um, 513 plan revisions after approval, no changes or modifications. <laughs> That's why 513.1 is why we're here. 513.2. Applicants for revision shall so submit at least eight copies of any proposed revision. To re and I just pass all that. You're on 514 now. Okay. <laughs> I'm on 514 Street and Design. I mean, that's already in. 514 1 is, um, it's already there. Yes. So we're not going through the, all the street design and construction requirements. Um, 514 2 dead end streets, that's NA. 514 3 approval of board of the subdivision sh plan shall not be deemed to constitute evidence of acceptance by the town of Mount Desert of any street, road, or right of way. Okay. <laughs> um, access 515 access direct sunlight. Do you have access to sunlight, Jeff? <laughs> uh, there is direct access to sunlight. Yes, excellent. Um, 516 cluster and workforce subdivision, NA. So, and same goes. Stay down with five. 
Yeah, five sixteen to the yeah, that's all in a. So I have section six B and you seven. You want a motion second on oh, five yes. section five complete. Yes. Yes, we do. Thank you. I'll so, make a motion to find section five complete. Dave Ashmore, second. All right. All those in favor, Meredith? Should I say complete and standards met? Yes. <laughs> Randolph, I. Dave seconded that. I thought she was voting. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, that was a vote. Thank you. Um, Dave? Am I supposed to second it at this point in time? Uh, no, I think we're voting now. And who who said who second? It was that? Meredith and Dave. And, now, and then Meredith talked about standard met. And when you said yes, she said Meredith, I. Okay, so now Dave, you're voting. <laughs> Dave said I. Dave Gloria, I. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Gloria. Gloria Kunji, I. Tracy. Tracy Keller, I. And myself, William Hanley, I. Now we do section six A, B, and C. You know, it's kind of foolish because a lot of it doesn't even apply. The only part under, I think the only part that would apply would be like six B eleven and six B six uh, fifteen. It's kind of redundant going through all the sections because this is like campground, driveway construction. I mean, it. This is just a land division. Yeah, so we could have a finding that section 6B is section 6A, B, and C are all NA, uh, except for section 6B11 15. and 6B15, for which the standard has been met. Which is, again, laws, septic system, uh, which has already been done. Mm -hmm. We got a purple. I so love that motion. I'll make that. Tracy Keller, second. All, right. All those in favor, Meredith? And off, aye. Tracy? Tracy Keller, aye. Dave? Dave Ashmore, aye. Gloria? Gloria Gunji, aye. And myself, William Hanley, aye. Okay, that was the completeness checklist. So we get a final vote to say it's complete. Yeah, yeah. you can get all pieces. pieces. Yeah. Okay, say that you find the application complete. All right. So, is there a final motion to find the application complete? Meredith Randolph, I make a motion to find the application complete. With Tracy Keller, second. All right. All those in favor, Meredith. Randolph, I. Tracy. Tracy Keller, I. Dave. Dave Ashmore, I. Gloria. Gloria Kunji, I. Myself, William Hanley, I. All right, he's complete. So, Jeff, your public hearing will be the last meeting in April. Yes, I see that. Um, April 26th. Yeah, it's because of the timing for the notification for the public hearing. Okay. All right. And at that meeting, would you, would if everything goes uh, goes well, um, the plan would be signed that night, or? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So you'll need to bring paper copies. Yeah. One's gonna stay, one will stay with the town after they do their signature, and then. And then you, whatever, however many copies you want or whatever the ways you want. And okay. Then one, and then one recorded at the registry of deed. Right, right, okay. Okay. Do you need um, recording information after we obtain it? Actually, no, because that, we, um, 
we can pull that up on the registry of deeds if we ever had to print it out. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. We'll see you in a month. <laughs> we'll see you in a month. <laughs> All right. I'll be there, obviously, in person with the paper. So thanks again. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Well, we technically already did other. So I think that was the last item tonight on the agenda. Yep. Other than German. Yeah, other than one other thing. May I? No, you may. Uh, Tracy Keller, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Dave Ashmore, second. All right, all those in favor, Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Dave. Dave Ashmore, aye. Gloria. Gloria Kunji, aye. Meredith. Randolph, aye. Myself, William Hanley, aye. Thank you. Good to see everybody. <laughs>